Good morning, everybody. What a lovely morning it is. As you can see, I'm sitting um, with my back towards my garden and it just looks so lovely out there. I thought today we would think about the ascension, the time when Jesus rose into heaven to return to his rightful place at the right hand of God. In Luke 24, it tells us the story of two men that were walking um, to Emmaus along the road and they were chatting to each other. And all of a sudden this chap joined them and was talking about the scriptures and the prophets and everything. And um, they got to the nearly um, to the end of um, Emma, uh, the path to Emmaus, which is a little village um, about seven miles outside Jerusalem. And so Jesus, the chap was going to walk on, um, but they said to him, no, don't go, come and stay with us for the night. It's getting dark now and could be dangerous. And so he did. And at supper that night, they were having their meal and Jesus took the um, bread and he blessed it, broke it and blessed it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised their saviour. And they said, you know, didn't our hearts, we should have known that it was Jesus. As he was telling us about the scriptures and telling us about um, the prophets and all that needed to be fulfilled um, for scriptures to all come true, um, we should have known within ourselves, our hearts should have burned within us. And they said, didn't our hearts feel warm within us as he was talking to us? And so they hurried to join the other 11 disciples who were in Jerusalem and they rushed in and they said, uh, they told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognised him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself stood among them. It doesn't say that the door opened, that um, there was a necessary way of entrance. Jesus just stood among them. But the whole group were terribly frightened. Well, you can imagine it, can't you? You're all together with your friends in a room and all of a sudden um, this person is in the midst of it and he's not come through the door in any way. So they were terribly frightened. They were thinking that they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why do you doubt who I am? Look, look at my hands and look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies and as you can see, I do. As he spoke, he held out his hands and he held out his, showed them his feet um, for them to be able to um, confirm um, that yes, there were the marks of the crucifixion. But still they stood there doubting, filled with joy and wonder. And then he asked them, do you have anything to eat? And they gave him some boiled fish. Now, ghosts don't eat fish because ghosts are normally transparent and you would see the food going down. He was a solid person of flesh standing before them with the marks of the stigmata of the crucifixion on his hands and his feet. And he was eating as they were eating. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me by Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must come true. And he said it was written long ago that the Messiah must suffer and die and rise again from the dead on the third day. With my authority, take this message of repentance to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. This was what we call the Great Commission. Jesus told us out to go out into the world and make disciples of all men, telling them that there is forgiveness if there's repentance and they turn to him. What a wonderful promise, what a wonderful promise. He did that for me in my life. I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart because and to take control of my life because I was making a bit of a mess of it one way or another. And that's what he did. He 
came into my heart. He cleaned it out. I said I was sorry and he forgave me and he's been with me ever since. Praise the Lord for that. You were witnesses of all these things, he told the disciples, because they were actually seeing him. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised. Now, in some gospel readings, they tell us about them being in the room and that the Holy Spirit appeared to them like tongues of fire and um, entered their hearts. And um, it was a big... Um, um, happening um, that was visual with the tongues of flame. Luke doesn't tell us about that. But he says, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. Now, God is a Father who makes promises to us and he keeps those promises. He never lets us down, never abandons us, never forsakes us. He keeps the promises that he made to us. Jesus said to them, stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Um, I often wonder, you know, what was his 